Hi, I'm Bobby Bissett, Architect for EDB Failover Manager. In this video, we will demonstrate starting a Failover Manager 2.1 cluster. We will start a cluster with one master and two standby nodes, and later add a third standby. I already have Postgres Advanced Server running and have previously installed and set up Failover Manager. When starting an agent, we tell the agent how to find the rest of the cluster through the .nodes file. Because this is the first agent started, the file can be empty. Now we will start the first agent. It doesn't matter which agent is started first. In this case, we're starting the agent on the master node. A cluster status check shows that the agent is running. Adding failover manager nodes to a running cluster is a two-step process. The first step is authorizing the nodes by adding them to the allowed node host list. The second step is telling the new agent how to find the cluster in order for it to join. We'll talk about the allowed node list first. When a node first starts, it automatically adds its own address to the allowed list. We can add other addresses to the list with the EFM allowed node command. This command replaces the add node command from 2.0, though the old command can still be used. After adding a node's address, we can start the agent on that node. Each address to be allowed must be added separately. While this is the general way for allowing new nodes to join the cluster, Failover Manager 2.1 supports a mechanism for allowing nodes automatically if their addresses are known at startup. This saves time when starting up clusters in a more stable environment. We will stop this agent, then set the auto allowed hosts property to true in the properties file. Then edit the .nodes file and add the addresses of all the cluster members that we want to be allowed to join. Now we start the agent. We can see from the cluster status output that the addresses are already in the allowed node host list. This saves time at startup and will make it easier later to restart the whole cluster if it has been shut down. Now that the next two nodes are allowed to join, step two is telling them how to join the cluster. In the previous version of Failover Manager, each node would need to know the addresses of all existing cluster members in order to find them and join the cluster. In 2.1, this has been simplified. From the cluster status output, we can see that there is now a membership coordinator node. Nodes that wish to join the cluster only need to have this address in order to join. If this coordinator is shut down or fails, another agent will be chosen as the coordinator, and the address is always available from the cluster status output. Note that, just as in 2.0, it is okay to have more addresses than needed in the .nodes file. The membership coordinator address is an optional feature to simplify startup. Now we will edit the .nodes file of the two standby nodes to add the coordinator address. We can start these agents without any other information and they will join the cluster. A cluster status call shows that all three nodes are in the same cluster. Now we will add a third standby node to the failover manager cluster. This will be the fourth node total. First, we run the allowed node command to add the new node's address to the allowed list. This command can be run on any node in the cluster. Now we'll move to our fourth node and edit the .nodes file. Again, only the membership coordinator address is required though it is fine to include the addresses of every other node as well. We can then start the fourth agent and add it to the cluster. The .nodes file is only read when starting a failover manager agent. Once running, the agent will maintain the file to include the address and port information of the other nodes. Thus, after starting our fourth agent, we can see that its .nodes file contains the information about the other three nodes. Similarly, our first node contains three addresses that represents machines 2 through 4. If we stop the agent on the fourth node, we can see that its address is removed from the .nodes file of this agent. When the fourth agent is started again, its address is added back. This can help simplify restarting a cluster if it needs to be stopped for any reason. 
When running the EFM stop cluster command, the .nodes file of each agent is left unchanged. Because of this, there is no need to edit any files when restarting the cluster. Since we have the auto allow host property set to true, we also do not need to run separate EFM allow node commands. We can simply restart the agents in any order. In this example, we are starting a standby node first. From the cluster status output, we see that every node we want in our cluster is already allowed to join. Because each node has every other node's address in its .nodes file, including the membership coordinator, they can be started without any other setup required. A final cluster status check shows that all four agents are running and have connected to form our cluster. This is the end of the Failover Manager cluster startup demonstration. In a future video, we will show more of Failover Manager during runtime, including database failover and the new switchover feature.